Today we're going to be showcasing a very special Pokemon in PvP, and that is Torterra. Torterra in Great League PvP. Now, Torterra is pretty good in Ultra League Premier Cup, and some may say that it's decent in Master League PvP. But the focus of this video is going to be on Torterra being an anti-meta monster in the Great League PvP. Why am I doing this video and Great League has already ended for the season? Well, I've been pretty busy for work lately and I really wanted to do this video so I finally had time to piece it together. So, uh, take this knowledge forward to the end of the season and the beginning of the next season and the future beyond. The battles featured in this video are also coming from my friend Devin. Devin is a longtime subscriber of Swag Tips, so I'm very happy to feature a video of his showing him in action whooping down things with Torterra. However, Devin is not the progenitor of the Torterra strategy. The progenitor is actually the 6-4 Ninja. Uh, you can find 6-4 Ninja on Twitch. Links to both Devin and the 6-4 Ninja's Twitter down in the description, as well as uh, the 6-4 Ninja's Twitch stream. So you can check him out in battle too. Before we get into the video, we gotta talk about what makes Torterra so good in the Great League. And it's all about that meta there. Torterra is able to take down Azumarill, Bastiodon, the Galar Stunfisk, Deoxys Defense Form, Shadow Machamp, and Galvantula. Now you might be sitting back and thinking, well, Ryan Swag, like Shadow Victory Bell, can also take down those Pokemon. In fact, most Razor Leaf Pokemon can beat those Pokemon. That is true. However, Torterra can defeat a lot of them with spending less shields or maybe even no shields. I mean, think about that uh, that Galar Stumpfisk there. Well, what the heck's it gonna do to Torterra? Earthquake? We resist that. Rock Slide? We also resist that. So Torterra is kind of uh, monolithic in that respect. Additionally, Torterra does have access to Stone Edge in its move pool. So flying type Pokemon coming in after the Razor Leaf farm down, they have to worry about that Stone Edge. Torterra doesn't always have to carry Stone Edge, but the threat of Stone Edge will always be there because I really don't see Torterra getting two charge moves off before going down, right? So they will never know if you have Stone Edge or not. And then an extra little bonus perk to the Torterra here is that the Sand Tomb does come earlier than the Acid Spray. So there's a lot of situations where a Victory Bell, for example, would not be able to reach the Acid Spray, so instead it's gonna go for the Leaf Blade, of course. Well, Torterra's Sand Tomb does come earlier, so you will for sure get a defense drop in on an opponent before going down. And it's also got some interesting coverage with that ground type damage too, even though the damage isn't all that significant. Right now, the Great League meta is definitely in favor of heavy grass type attackers, and Torterra is just an interesting little addition to that grass type squad, so could be good to try it out. So with that all said, we can finally get into Devin's battles. Devin is backing up his Torterra with a Galar Stumpfisk and an Altaria. Basically, Torterra does answer one part of that legendary grass hole core, uh, but you definitely need some backup for other grass types as well, so Altaria, picking that up. And then for the end game, Galar Stumpfisk, pretty good in just about all scenarios, especially when backed up by a grass type Pokemon. I also want to make a special note too, he is like rank 7, I think, in these videos. Uh, this video was shot like two weeks ago, so yeah, definitely slow on the draw here with making the video, so apologies to everybody. Um, but no, he's rank 9 now. You can see from his Gary Oak jacket, this guy slays, so no question about Devin's skills here. And with that all said, let's get into the video. So for our first opponent here, we have one Elo, uh, 76, I believe, and leading in with the Azumarill. So Azumarill, Stunfisk, what more could you uh, want from a Great League meta team? Now this is kind of interesting why they swapped to a Pokemon that's weak to Torterra, you know, out of a Pokemon that's weak to Torterra. Uh, once you see his back line, it makes a little bit more sense. So, Bastiodon, right? None of his Pokemon want to deal with Torterra. Now, if this were to be a more standard sort of Great League team, uh, you know, it might be kind of tricky to deal with. But, Devin here has the Torterra, which is uh, Torterrable for uh, this opponent to deal with. So, solid meta lines, definitely not appreciating the Torterra. Now you can see here that, yes, the team is a little bit weak to the Azumarill, of course, especially once Torterra is taken out of the way, um, but Galar Stumpfisk is solid enough of a neutral attacker that it just puts a lot of threat on the Azumarill. Azumarill, you know, it doesn't like taking all those neutral hits, right? And then Devin here is maintaining double shields for the endgame here, so even though Bastiodon is taking him out, putting some pressure on him, Stumpfisk may just have what it takes with those shields to survive to the end game. Bringing in the Earthquake, 
takes him out. In comes Torterra, in control, and yeah, Zimmeril definitely doesn't have it. Moving on, we got our next opponent, the Hugh 6 Key. Hugh 64 Kai. Leading in with Stunfisk, so another meta type Pokemon in the lead situation, and then swapping over to the Meganium of all things. Yeah, you really don't want to swap to Meganium ever in PvP against the lead. Um, but once you see what this guy has for his team, once again, can't really deal with the Torterra. So what other option do they have other than swapping to the Meganium? So definitely a savage Pokemon all around. So of course, Altaria, flying type Pokemon, waiting in the wings to scoop up those grass type Pokemon, which is exactly what Altaria does. And uh, yeah, it may be stuck in against the G-Fisk here. It's got no hope, but G-Fisk ain't gonna come out of that fight feeling very good. And Torterra there just mulches it down with the Razor Leaf damage. All that's left in the back is Deoxys. And most Deoxys really don't have a move to deal with the Torterra at all. Like, what are they gonna do? Thunderbolt it? That's a triple resist. Rock Slide? A single resist. So, yeah, they just give up there because no hope against the Torterra. The Torterrible. Next up, we got Poke Stark 703, leading in with the Deoxys. So, I just told you about how Torterra thrashes the Deoxys. Yeah, now here's a Deoxys in the lead slot. The only attack that really makes sense to use against this thing is Psycho Boost, and if it's not on them, they don't have it. And a lot of them don't like to throw it right away because, you know, maybe it'll get shielded or, you know, they don't want to burn their attack stat right away. So, yeah, Deoxys Defense Form definitely has it pretty rough there. In comes in Mawile. Now, Mawile is a pretty solid Pokemon overall in this current meta. Definitely deals with the Grass Hole team pretty well. Um, but doesn't really like facing, you know, the Stumpfisk all that much, especially when it has a shield down. In comes the Azumarill. We do have the swap advantage here, but we also have Altaria in the back, so definitely not the best case scenario for facing Azumarill here. The best thing we got going for us right now is the fact that we have a shield and they don't. Now, while Azumarill does have a beneficial matchup against the Altaria overall, this is a play rough Azumarill, not an Ice Beam Azumarill, so not as threatening to the Altaria as per usual, and it's also in the red when we're in the green and have a shield, so definitely a big benefit to us there. It is a relatively tight match. They go in for the power up punch, not enough to take us down. The sky attack, is it enough to take them down? Yeah, absolutely. And then we got the final Azumarill here, and we just make it to the KOing Sky Attack, masterfully articulated by the Devon, taking him out, earning that jacket. Next up, we got the Ebrier, Ebrier, next opponent, leading in with the Bastiodon. In fact, this team might just be the infamous Grasshole Core. So once again, flying type Pokemon in the back to catch the Grass type swap in, easily done. But that's not why the Grass Hole team's so good. You know, the reason why it's so good is once you do that, in comes Bastiodon. Bastiodon does not care about Altaria. You can throw whatever you want at it, it doesn't matter. Now, why is Devin throwing Dragon Pulses instead of Sky Attacks? Well, Dragon Pulse does do marginally more damage. So if you can throw, you know, two Dragon Pulses and a Sky Attack instead of, you know, throw in the same time that you could throw three Sky Attacks, it makes more sense to go about it that way. Devin didn't reach that final charge move, which is unfortunate. That would have made Sky Attack a little bit more favorable in that situation. Uh, it's kind of hard to call it in a lot of these situations, you know? At any rate, yeah, Sand Tomb going in for the uh, Victory Bell here. Pretty dicey situation to deal with the Grass Hole Core team <laughs> after that because, you know, two Pokemon relatively weak to Razor Leaf, um, but with good shield management, good swap management, and of course, Sand Tomb debuffs, you can pick up the victory uh, pretty tightly against a double grass, grass hole core team. Not all of them have two grasses, this one does, and uh, yeah, Devin is able to pull out the victory. Big W. What is our next opponent here? I want a little preview. Okay, it's the Machamp team. This team might have a Machamp in the lead. Yeah, Shadow Machamp in the lead. Sorry I missed the name there, friend. Um, but yeah, Shadow Machamp, definitely a Pokemon that Torterra can deal with pretty easily. I mean, has like no defense, you got Razor Leaf, what does it want? They swap in uh, Abomasnow here. Abomasnow isn't the easiest Pokemon for this Torterra team to deal with, but with the debuff thrown onto it, uh, it's a little bit easier to manage than it would be otherwise. Like, a Rock Slide does have a chance of, well, there we go, they didn't even shield it. <laughs> so yeah, Rock Slide can OHKO 
um, without the uh, with the debuff on, where it might struggle to do that without the debuff. So sand tomb debuffs definitely tricking up the opponents here. They don't know how to expect all that damage. And then we've got the lantern. Lantern's kind of an interesting pick in the back. I believe this is a spark lantern, not a water gun lantern. So with the one shield, it is able to overcome the Altaria there. And if you're wondering once again, why did Altaria go for Dragon Pulse instead of Sky Attack? Well, electric type Pokemon resist flying type damage. So what did you want him to throw, man? Champ comes in with the murderous Karate Chop and yeah, unsuccessful here, unfortunately. Can't win them all, you know? We've got Chawa92 leading in with the Mew. Mew is so annoying because you never know exactly what it has. And it does have the chance to carry, you know, Overheat or the uh, Flame Charge nowadays, but they never really seem to have it. If you're fighting against a Mew, more likely than not, it's going to have the Wild Charge, and therefore, it's a Pokemon that really doesn't like dealing with the Torterra that much. In comes Deoxys Defense Form. The Razor Leaf damage is some pretty good chip. We weren't able to reach the charge move, which is unfortunate, but we did get that chip damage in. And then Stumpfisk just completely shuts down those charge moves, so the extra little farm action, you know, really doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things. Rock Slide comes in once again. They swap to the Metacham, and what do we have but Altaria, fighting type Pokemon. The Ice Punch definitely hurts, but the Ice Punch doesn't help out a whole heck of a lot when it comes to this matchup. Caught the Ice Punch with the shield instead of a power up punch, so very good catch there. Uh, they go for the double Ice Punch because they don't want to mess around here, and uh, thankfully we reached the Sky Attack before they reached the KOing Ice Punch. Final Pokemon, Deoxys, can't handle the Torterra team. And then finally, this team's a really interesting one. Um, we got Porochin uh, 39, I believe. Leading in with the Obstagoon. So as you guys know, Obstagoon is the doom when it comes to the Great League. True Chads leading in with it. Unless of course they're Devin being bosses with the Torterra. What happens when these two bosses collide? Um, well it looks like uh, Devin's winning the lead there. So sorry Obstagoon. But what comes in next but this guy, the Swalot. Freaking joke man looking Pokemon. But now upgraded with the Infestation energy buff. Throwing those Ice Beams, definitely not the most pleasant Pokemon for this team to deal with. So yeah, interesting uh, inclusion of the Swalot here. I love this Pokemon, it's so goofy looking, I had to showcase it in this video. Um, Ice Beam definitely wearing down, and he saves a Swalot for later, swapping in the Azumarill. Maybe he knows that, that Evan has an Altaria in the back and just can't deal with the Azumarill now that Torterra is gone. and. Uh, Stump Fisk is heavily weakened, but sometimes it's just how the, the pendulum swings, you know what I'm saying? I believe this is an Ice Beam Azumarill, it is an Ice Beam Azumarill, but we are surviving. Masterfully, the Swalot catches the Sky Attack, and we're not able to farm it down in time for, you know, until it reaches the Ice Beam. And uh, as far as final Pokemon goes, is that the end game? That is the end game. Very close. If they didn't catch that attack, man. So as you can tell, Torterra definitely rocks in the Great League. So when it comes to the end of the current season, you could try out Torterra yourself. The beginning of the next season, Great Leagues forever and beyond. Torterra, looking pretty hot. Once again, want to give a special shout out to Devin. Thank you so much for sending me these videos to help me make some Great League content here. And also shout out to the 6-4 Ninja for coming up with the Torterra in general. Once again, links to their Twitters and link to the 6-4 Ninja's Twitch down in the description so you can check them out. If you got any questions on this content, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, well make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my patron supporters. If you'd like to support the Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. And also shout out to the Ninja 6-4, the 6-4 Ninja. <laughs> Goddamn.